Editing is a very important step in the creative process because it can really bring our vision to life. My approach to editing is very similar to my approach to photography. I try to keep it as simple as possible. In this video, I'll show you how I use masking, some of the most powerful tools we have in our toolbox in Lightroom to make my images better. My hope with this video is to give you some ideas and some inspiration that maybe you can apply to your own images. It is very rainy and windy out there, so it's the perfect time to sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and just go through our old images. I'll be using Lightroom, but this is something that you can achieve with pretty much any editing software, and of course with Lightroom Classic as well. But in this version of Lightroom, we'll find most of our editing tools on the right side. Here are the basic, most common editing uh, options. This is cropping, the healing brush, and here are the masking tools under this uh, circle, dotted circle. And as we can see, we can create a new mask. And the ones that we are gonna be talking about mainly in this video are the brush, the linear gradient, and the radial gradient. Let's talk first about linear gradients. This is the one that I use the most in my editing. And here I have an example of that in this image I made in Madeira last year. I have a linear gradient already applied. And the best way to see what this tool can do for us is to hide this uh, gradient. And as you can see, the whole bottom left of the frame is much lighter, much brighter. And in my opinion, it's kind of competing for the attention. What I want the viewer to focus on in this image is in the trunk and then follow the arm of this uh, tree or the branch, of course, of the tree towards the trees in the background. But this foreground here is kind of making that harder because it's competing for attention because it is much brighter. So by applying this linear gradient, I am darkening that area. So now your eyes are more focused in the areas of the frame that are higher contrast. In this case, this dark trunk against the white background and then the transition along the branch towards the trees in the background. All right, so I'm going to show you more examples. This is something that I use uh, very often when I have a lot of foreground or the foreground is messy and busy. Again, just trying to focus the attention of the viewer in the subject or whatever I want them to look at. This example is a much more subtle one. In this case, the gradient uh, creates a smooth uh, transition from the bottom of the frame towards the top of the frame where the subject is. This is a composition technique I like to use a lot to place my subject on the top of the frame because it gives the subject more importance and it makes it more uh, dominant in the frame. So I have to deal with a lot of foreground in a lot of cases. Here, if I hide the gradient, you'll hopefully see how the, the foreground, the bottom of the frame is a little bit messy and a little bit busy. So what I did here is I decreased the clarity and I added hazing to this part of the frame. And by doing that, I remove a lot of the details. So again, it's all about the competition for attention in the frame. I don't want the viewer to get distracted by what's in the on the bottom of the frame, by what's on the foreground. I want them to transition very smoothly towards the top, towards the subject. I'm going to show you a few more examples of images where I apply this same uh, concept. This is an image I made in Riaño, and what I want the viewer to focus on is on this uh, bush slash tree here and the, the background, of course. But as you'll see, the foreground of this image was kind of busy and messy as well. It was very bright. So that competes for attention in the frame. We are dividing our attention, not just in between the bush and the mountains in the background, but now the foreground is a very important component of the image. So by creating this uh, linear gradient here and by decreasing the exposure, and of course also the clarity and the, 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 the dehazing of that area, I am able to, I think, focus attention of the viewer better on the parts of the image I want them to look at. 
So far, all of the examples show how I darken the foreground of the image, but it's not always the case. Sometimes I use the linear gradient, like in this case, to actually make uh, the some parts of the frame brighter, as you can see here, because in this case, this is more like a high key image where the subject of the, the, the picture is dark. So the attention is going to go to those areas of the image with higher contrast. So what I want here is to decrease that contrast on the top of the frame so your attention goes directly to those houses there in the middle of the frame or the bottom part of the frame. We're going to take a look at the next tool now. This one, instead of being a straight line, it's a circle or more specifically an oval. So instead of being called a linear gradient, of course, it's called a radial gradient, as you can see here. I already have one created and applied on this image. And what I was trying to do with this mask, as you can see in the overlay, the, the parts of the frame that is affecting, is to emphasize that swirling uh, effect or look to the, the, the weeds there. As you can see there, without the overlay, there you go. So emphasizes that swirling uh, effect that the image had. Now, as you can see on the overlay, overlay, this is very similar to what a vignette does and achieves, but in this case, the gradient uh, gives us more control over the position of uh, that vignette, say, and the shape and the size and everything. So I have another example here where I have a vignette applied. I like the effect that it has on the bottom of the frame, but I don't like it as much on the top because it's removing some of the contrast that that mountain has against the bright sky. So what I'm going to do, well, first is going to create a version of this editing so you can see the difference in both approaches. So I'm going to remove that vignetting from this image. And now I'm going to try to create a similar effect with a radial gradient. By default, a radial gradient affects everything that is inside that oval. We want the opposite. So what we need to do is to invert here. This is the option. And now it's affecting everything outside of that oval. So this is more similar to the vignette and to what we are trying to achieve here. So as I said, you have more control. You can position this uh, vignette, if you will, uh, whatever you want, and you can make it the shape you want. So something like this should be fine for the bottom of the frame. As you can see, it's also affecting the top. It's affecting the mountains. So if we leave it like this, it's going to have a very similar effect to what we had before. But one of the advantages of using with the masking tools like this is that we can uh, transform them and uh, uh, with with tools like the brush so we can remove some uh, of that masking some of that mask from the top the ones the parts that we don't want so we can guarantee that this mask now all the edits that we do to this mask are only going to affect those parts that we see in red in the frame and that is the bottom of the frame so a little bit of exposure decrease here and now we can go to the uh, versions and compare gradient vignette gradient vignette gradient vignette look at the bottom of the frame this is with the vignette this is with the gradient is very similar but now look at the top of the frame this is with the gradient and this is with the vignette as you can see the vignette is affecting parts of the image that I don't want to be affected because I still want that contrast in the sky, the mountains, and the sand dune. So in this case, the gradient, uh, the radial gradient, works much better than the vignette. The last masking tool is the brush. This is very powerful, but it's also the most complicated to use one. So I think that the best example I can show you is this image I made last year in the Pyrenees Mountains. And as you'll see, I have, well, a few masks. These are linear masks on the top of the frame, just to emphasize those clouds. But the most important mask I have is this one. As you can see, it's a brush, it's a mask that is uh, affecting only the stream that you see uh, there. And you'll see that the effect is very drastic because without this mask, this would be the image. This is with the mask. So as you can see, I am adding contrast. I'm emphasizing that path of the stream and those 
curves and it's making the image so much better because of that added contrast and because of you know your attention goes to the bottom of the frame your eyes go along the stream and then you get to the mountain on the top without it maybe your eyes will go to the mountain first and then you'll notice the stream on the bottom but it's not as contrasty it's not as powerful as it is with the brush this is another example where the brush makes a huge difference a mask uh, is here this is without the brush this is with the brush again adding that contrast the grass was frozen this morning but the road was pretty bright as well so by darkening the road i am creating that contrast and in my opinion making the image much better now the problem with the brush tool is that it can be very time consuming because even though you have things that help quite a bit like the auto mask you have to go little by little filling and selecting all the stuff that you want to select but there is a relatively recent uh, feature in Lightroom that is this one select subject now it doesn't work perfectly in every case but when it works it works pretty well and it should work pretty well in this image there you go because the subject is very clear in the image so by doing that it automatically creates using ai a selection a mask with the tree with the main subject already selected and now we can apply edits just to that part of the image just to the tree so we can show more details by raising the shadows or we can hide the details by decreasing them so that's pretty useful now as you could see in the overlay is not totally accurate so you might want to go and refine that selection but it saved me a lot of time because sometimes you don't know what the edit is going to look like so what i do is i just do a quick subject selection i apply a few edits and if i like what i see then i can go and refine the selection or do it myself by hand using just your typical regular brush and this is probably the most clear example I can show you of how masks can affect an image. This was in point ridges and I have just two masks, but you, you'll see how much of an effect they had on this image. The first one I created using the select subject feature. I was just to raise a little bit the uh, shadows on that tree and to show some of the details. By the way, this is an image I made with my phone, so it doesn't have the greatest dynamic range, but it had enough to show some of those details. And the most important mask here is the linear gradient on the bottom right of the frame. Look at this. This is the huge difference this mask is doing and is making for this image. It's a completely different image. It's a completely different photograph. Your attention is not what it should be. With the mask, we focus the viewer on this leaning tree and the trees in the background, but without it, the attention is just scattered all over because these parts of the frame are so bright that are competing, not just competing for attention, but probably winning for the attention there. So the mask makes this image so much better. And this is what these masking tools can do you for your images. Of course, things like composition and light are key aspects of photography, but as we've seen, a little bit of editing can bring your vision to life by taking those already very good raw files, those already very good negatives, and improving them just so slightly to get you there, to create the vision that you had in the field. All right, I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And if you have any other tips or ideas about how to use these tools in Lightroom, please leave them in the comments down below as well. As usual, I wanted to thank my Patreons for their very generous support. All of this is possible thanks to you. If you want to support my work as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Or you can buy my book One, which I have more copies of available. The link is going to be in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.